Welcome again uh, in my course uh, Power Electronics Application to Power System. In the last lecture, I discuss uh, the power, uh, I, I discuss and derive the expressions for power flow of a uh, long lossless transmission line. Remember, I, I repeat this expression what we derive in the last lecture is applicable to uh, lossless long power transmission lines. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular lecture, I, I will show you a numerical example in which I will uh, discuss how to solve this uh, numerical problems related to uh, this long lossless power transmission line. So, one thing that you must remember that uh, this active power and reactive power expressions which we got in the last lecture are equal, they are equal because we consider the line to be lossless. If there is no loss considered, so whatever active power is flowing uh, from the sending end, same active power is uh, reaching at the receiving end. Okay. So, but if we consider losses, this will differ. Okay. But uh, again, for simplicity, uh, in, in throughout this course, we, we will consider the power transmission system to be lossless. And this is a very valid assumption considering that uh, this amount of power loss happens in a uh, long uh, high voltage, extra high voltage power transmission line uh, is ignorable uh, for simplicity. Okay. So, let us see that uh, numerical problem. numerical example. Okay. So, let us consider that we have, let us consider we have a three phase symmetrical symmetrical lossless long power transmission line line with the following parameters. Okay. Now, uh, before I go for these line parameters, let me tell you that even though uh, this three phase is not mentioned, but you should understand that long power transmission line are all of three phase. So, you should not consider it as single phase, nowhere you will see that a long power transmission line is of single phase. So, even though this three phase is not mentioned in a particular numerical problem, you have to assume that uh, this it is three phase. Okay. Now, what is symmetrical line? I will come to that and lossless line stands for uh, this, uh, we ignore this line series resistance and sun conductance. That means, we consider R is equal to Z is equal to 0. Okay. And long power transmission line of course, you, you are learning this from the very beginning. So, this parameter values are given as V s magnitude, V r magnitude are equal and they are of 735 kV. Okay. So, here it is mentioned that V s and V r. What do you mean by V s? V s is the sending end voltage and what is V r? V r is receiving end voltage. So, in a particular transmission line, the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage are equal and when this happens, this is called as symmetrical line. So, a symmetrical line stands for V s and V r that sending end and receiving end voltages are equal. Okay. Now, next is frequency is given as C 
60 hertz. Okay. Now, if frequency is not given, uh, then you can assume it as a 50 hertz, but here the frequency is given as 60 hertz. You know in India, we have power frequency as 50 hertz, but uh, in other part of the world, they use either 50 hertz as a power frequency or 60 hertz. In USA, uh, the power frequency is considered to be 60 hertz. Then it is given that L is equal to 0 0.932 milli Henry per kilometer and C is equal to 12.2 NF, NF stands for nano farad per kilometer. These two are important parameters of the line, one is line uh, inductance, another is line capacitance. This is given to be in milli Henry per kilometer and nano farad per kilometer. It means that as I said while deriving the expressions of various parameters like voltages, current and uh, uh, this power flow or active power flow and reactive power flow, this L or C whatever we consider are distributed in nature. right? So, uh, when we consider so, then the parameter value would be some unit either farad or Henry per kilometer or per meter. This that means all these uh, derivations have been done considering that this L and C are representing that line uh, inductance and line capacitance per unit length. So, here it is so. Okay. Then another thing is given that which is very important that line length is 800 kilometer. So, 800 kilometer is line length. Okay. Then you have been asked to determine number 1 surge impedance loading. charge impedance loading or in short SIL. Then number 2 is active power at sending end which is represented by PS and receiving end. Which is represented by P r right. Then reactive power at sending end that is Q s and receiving end that is q r. Also you have been asked to determine the voltage at receiving end at no load condition considering V s not equal to V r. So, for this particular uh, you know problem, we will not consider the line to be symmetrical that is V s is equal to V r. So, if uh, suppose the line loses symmetry, then uh, what would be the voltage at the receiving end? That is what the fifth question asked. Okay. So, let us see the solution. So, we will first solve the first questions that is SIL. Okay. 
So, now what is SIL uh, or search impedance loading? This is I already I discuss in my previous lectures that uh, when a particular transmission line is loaded uh, with a search impedance, uh, search impedance represent the characteristic impedance of the line, then uh, whatever power will flow through the line during that condition is called search impedance loading. And uh, this is a very special condition and uh, this happens when the system uh, your line characteristic impedance exactly matches with the load impedance at the receiving end side. So, when it happens uh, there is you know uh, the flat voltage profile uh, that we can see in a trans transmission line that means voltage at each and every point of the transmission line re remains same and this is I already discussed. So, let us find out the numerical value of the search impedance loading over here. Now, as we know in order to find the search impedance loading, we have to find out what is the characteristic impedance or search impedance okay? and uh, also we need to find out what is the phase constant is beta and accordingly what is beta L in order to find out all these uh, relevant parameters that we that is being asked. Okay. Now, what is this ZC? ZC represents search impedance that we know which is equal to root over L by C, where L is basically this uh, line inductance per unit length here it is given per kilometer and C is line capacitance per unit length here it is given as per kilometer. Now, uh, if this line inductance and capacitance are given with respect to different length one is let us say meter another is let us say kilometer then you have to bring out uh, them under the same reference. So, here there is no problem because L and C both are given as per unit kilometer. Okay. So, per unit kilometer will be cancelled out when you take the ratio of L to C. Okay. So, let us take the ratio and square root it. So, L is 0 0.5. 932 milli henry. So, milli henry means it was it is 10 to the power minus 3 multiplied by this 9.932 that much of henry. Okay. And this uh, C it is equal to 12.2 nano farad multiplied by since it is nano farad. So, we need to multiply it to with 10 to the power 9. Okay then whatever we will get as a solution that is represent the characteristic impedance okay. that is coming out to be if you solve it that is coming out to be 276.4 ohm. As I said that this unit of this characteristic impedance or search impedance is ohm although it is a ratio of square root of L to C. Okay. So, this is determined. Now, what is this beta? Beta as you know it is equal to omega root over L C. Okay. All right. This is representing omega root over L C. In fact, in my derivation also you, you have seen that gamma squared was uh, root over z multiplied by y. Now, z represents the impedance of the line, series impedance of the line and y represents the shunt admittance of the line. Now, for lossless line since the line is considered to be lossless then r and x are considered to be 0. So, you know that beta uh, gamma is basically equal to uh, j beta where beta is basically root of this uh, uh, this reactance or reactance of the line or reactive uh, impedance of the line multiplied by uh, reactive admittance of the line. Now, when you have so then omega will be a common factor. So, omega square will arrive at there and if you bring it outside this uh, root then it will appear over here then this multiplied by root over L c will give you beta. Now, how do you get this omega? Omega will get from the line frequency which is given as 60 hertz. So, all of we know that uh, if line frequency is f then omega is basically equal to 2 pi f. So, this is equal to 2 pi multiplied by 
is free system frequency that is 60 hertz multiplied by this roots of this L, L is again 0 0.932 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 multiplied by this C that is 12.2 multiplied by 10 to the power 9. Okay. Now, if you solve it then what we will get is 1.27 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 radian per kilometer. Remember the unit it is radian per kilometer. Okay. So, that is what the phase constant. So, beta represents beta represents phase constant. Okay. Now, in order to uh, uh, solve this active and reactive power, you know they are function of beta L last in the last uh, class lecture we have seen uh, the derivation of this active and reactive power uh, shows that this active and reactive power uh, of a power transmission line is not only dependent upon the uh, system voltage and the uh, surge impedance it also depends upon this beta L. Okay. Now, this beta is basically phase constant and L is the line length that is 800 kilometer. So, beta L will be equal to this 1.27 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 multiplied by 800 radian. Okay. So, since uh, it is it was radian per kilometer, so we multiplied this line length in order to bring it to radian, right. But you know that in order to solve this active and reactive power, the expression that we get that is coming out to be function of either sin beta L or cos beta L. Okay. So, for uh, our ease of calculation, we will convert this radian to degree. And how we will do that? All of you know that it is 1.27 multiplied by minus 10 to the uh, 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 800 multiplied by 180 divided by pi. So, that much of degree so, and that is coming out to be 58.27 degree. Okay. So, we get this uh, surge impedance which is coming out to be this, we get this beta L which is coming out to be this. Okay. We also get this beta. So, this should be used in uh, very, this would be used in various times to calculate this active reactive power. Okay. So, this surge impedance loading as we know, it is uh, it's, uh, it's represents the power flow through the line when it will be terminated to an impedance which is equal to the surge impedance. Okay. So, this is equal to 3 multiplied by V s this is per phase. So, I represent P p okay, multiplied by V r this is also per phase I am writing P p divided by Z c. Okay. So, where, where this P P represents per fetch quantity. Okay. Now, this can be written as root 3 V s per fetch multiplied by root 3 V r per fetch divided by Z c. Now, root 3 V s per fetch is nothing but V s line to line and uh, root 3 V r per fetch is representing by V r line to line. This is divided by Z c. Okay. So, that is what the search impedance loading and we know that this V s uh, is given out to be 735 k b. Here, there is a point that I should tell that uh, when you uh, see that the uh, voltage rating of a power transmission line. In India as I said we have commonly three voltage levels uh, in our entire uh, country uh, uh, 
for power transmission one is uh, 220 kV another is uh, 400 kV another is 765 kV. Now when we talk about this 220 kV 765 kV or even this uh, distribution level voltage like 11 kV these are the voltage which are represented by line to line voltage. So, this 735 uh, kV it is uh, basically representing line to line voltage. So, if nothing is mentioned whatever the voltage level is given in a power transmission line or in power distribution line you have to assume that they are line to line voltage. Okay. So, uh, that is very important because many a times this would not be mentioned. Okay. So, that is why I convert this SIL formula in terms of line to line voltage. Now, let us put this values directly. So, V s and V r are equal. So, this V r, V s and V r are basically line to line voltage. Now, what do you mean by line to line voltage? It is taught in your in basic electrical engineering course. It is nothing but the voltage in between any two line or any two phases of a power transmission uh, system or power any power system. Power system is usually of three phase and in between any two phases whatever the voltage exists that is the line to line voltage. Okay. So, here it is given uh, as 735 kV. So, I am just writing it directly 735 multiplied by 735 divided by this Z C. Z C is uh, given as uh, 276.4. Okay. Now, here is another important thing that you can note down at this point that these voltages are given as kilo volt. So, these voltages are given as kilo volt. So, I can if we add if we multiply 2, two kilo volt basically it is uh, you have to multiply this 10 to the power 6 then whatever unit will be getting because surge impedance loading the unit would be uh, the similar to this power. So, that unit would be in what. Okay. Now, if someone says that okay, uh, I will just exclude this 10 to the power 6 watt, I will just simply write it is 735 multiplied by 735. Then whatever this uh, power rating that you will get that will be in megawatt because 1 watt stands for uh, 10 1 megawatt stands for 10 to the power 6 watt okay so so this is equal to 276.4 and this is coming out to be as per my calculation it is coming out to be 1954 1954 megawatt okay so that is what the surge impedance loading now remember usually in long power transmission line the power flow in terms of megawatt not in watt or kilowatt. Okay. So, so it is better that you uh, should not uh, represent this uh, SIL in terms of watt. Okay. If you represent in terms of watt then it should be 1954 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 watt. So, that is a very big amount okay. the, uh, that will represent a very uh, uh, big numerical value. But if you just convert this unit from watt to megawatt, this is 1954 megawatt. So, it is somewhat the usual way to represent the power flow through long transmission line. So, power flow in long transmission line is usually represented in a megawatt. I am talking about active power flow. Okay. So, as this SIL also. Okay. So, the first uh, the question is solved we determine the surge impedance loading. Then the second question that is we have to determine the active and react uh, active power at the sending end and receiving end side. Now, here since we consider that the line to be lossless line to be lossless then automatically you should understand that the sending end active power and receiving end active power would be same. Okay. So, that is what we derived in the last lecture. The expressions for sending end power and receiving end power for lossless long power transmission line are same because obviously, there is if there is no loss. So, whatever power you are uh, sending through the sending end that same power you are uh, getting at the receiving end side. So, the expression for sending end 
power that is P s is equal to P r is equal to 3 multiplied by this V s power fetch multiplied by V r power fetch divided by Z c sin beta l multiplied by sin delta. This expression we have derived in the last lecture. If you can uh, go back and check my last lecture, you will get we will get exactly the same expression. Now, here again this P p represents power phase quantity, power phase voltage. Okay. Now, again I already discussed in the last lecture that we can convert this power phase to line to line similar to what we did in case of last question that is SIL. So, if we do so, then what we will get is this is equal to V s line to line multiplied by V r line to line divided by Z c sin beta l multiplied by sin delta. Okay. Now, what is this uh, delta? Delta represents the angular displacement, the angular displacement between the sending and voltage V s and the receiving and voltage V r. Okay. So, which we consider to be delta. So, it is the difference of the angle angle of the sending end voltage to uh, receiving end voltage. Right. Now, uh, already we know that V s is equal to 735 kb and V r is also equal to 735 kb. We are just multiplying this and Z c we consider to be 276.4 this is we derived and sin beta L is equal to sin 58.27 degree multiplied by sin delta. As you know that this magnitude of this beta L and Z c already we derived so that we can directly find the numerical value over here. So, this is what this uh, Z c and this is what the uh, beta L 58.27. All right, so this is coming out to be as per my calculation 2298 sin delta and the unit of this will be megawatt since we are multiplying 2 kilo volt over here one is 735 another is 735. Okay. So, P s is equal to P r is coming out to be this. Now, here you can see that uh, this both this power is are function of delta. So, if delta varies then the power flow will change. So, delta is usually vary. So, you can note that delta will vary. according to the variation of the load to the variation of load at the receiving end. So, according to the variation of the load delta will change and accordingly this active, active power flow through the line will get change. But whatever uh, this load might be, uh, since we consider that line to be lossless, uh, this P s and P r will remain same. So, P s and P r, P s is equal to P r because we consider the line to be 
lossless this is very important okay so we uh, solve the second questions also now the third question is this we need to find out this reactive power at the sending end side and reactive power at the receiving end side already we determine that uh, the expression of reactive power both the sending end side and receiving end side so we can use this expression to find out this qs and qr so what are these expression we know that qs expression was equal to vs line to line square multiplied by cos beta l minus v s line to line multiplied by v r line to line cos delta divided by z c sin beta l. Look at this expression of active uh, power and uh, this reactive power the denominator of both the active and reactive power are same that is z c sin beta l here also it was z c sin beta l. So, denominators are same numerators are of course, different, but one thing you can note down here he is that uh, this v s uh, is represented by line to line. So, if you just represent uh, v s and v r both are uh, parfetch like this then 3 needs to be multiplied. So, in order to avoid this multiplication with 3, 3 we consider this V s to be line to line and V r to be also line to line. So, let us put these values again. So, 735 is the value of V s cos beta l will be cosine 58.27 degree which already we determined. So, beta l is 58.27 degree. So, V s and V r are equal that is 735 multiplied by 735 multiplied by this cos delta. This delta we are not changing anything because delta will depend upon the loading. Delta will depend upon delta will vary according to the variation of the load. So, we will not consider any variation uh, any, any change of delta over here. So, so, delta is we are keeping as it is and z c sin beta l it is equal to 276.4 multiplied by sin 58.27 degree. Okay. Now, what would be the unit of this q s? So, similar to this uh, this p s and p r the unit of q s also in of q r would be in terms of mega volt ampere reactive. So, this will be equal to m v a r. This is what the usual representation of reactive power unit that represents mega volt ampere reactive. So, if we solve this uh, numerical uh, by putting this numerical value then whatever we will get that is coming out to be 1208.54 minus 2298 cos delta that is mvar. So, that is what we got as reactive power at the sending end. So, this is what the reactive power at sending end of the line. Okay. Similarly, we will also derive the expression of q r. Uh, q r represents the reactive power at the receiving end of the transmission line. So, so q r is basically representing uh, this uh, reactive power at the receiving end of the line. It is equal to its expression is v s line to line multiplied by v r line to line cos delta minus v r square multiplied by this is also line to line multiplied by 
cos beta L divided by Zc sin beta L. This expression we already derived in the last lecture. Okay. So, that is the expression for reactive power at the receiving end side. Okay. Now, uh, again if one uh, consider that voltage at the sending end and voltage at the receiving end are per fetch quantities, then you have to multiply with 3. Okay. We consider V s line to line, V r line to line. So, 3 is already absorbed there okay. because you know that line to line voltage is equal to root 3 times of the uh, phase voltage. Okay. Now, if we put all these values, this will be 735 multiplied by 735 multiplied by cos delta multiplied by this is also 735 square cos beta L, beta L is given as 58.24 degree divided by the numerator is same that is Z c is equal to 276.4 multiplied by sin beta L sin 58.24 degree. Okay. Now, we need to simplify this. Now, uh, before we do the simplification, what would be the unit? Unit will be again same that is M V A R. Why this mega volt ampere reactive? Because we consider that 735 is basically kilo volt, we are not uh, changing it to volt. So, 735 square represent uh, 10 to the power 6 times of this volt ampere reactive which is nothing but uh, M V A R. Now, if you solve this, then whatever you will is coming out to be that is 2298 cos delta minus 1208.54 this much of M V A R. Okay. Now, if we write Q S and Q R together, so Q S was if we go back and see what was Q S, Q S was 1208.54 minus 2298 cos delta. So, this was 1208.54 minus 2298 cos delta and Q R is equal to 2298 cos delta minus 1208.54 that much of M V R. So, one thing that you can notice from these two expressions that Q S is basically equal to minus Q R okay. and this is true because we consider this is happening, this is happening because we consider the line to be symmetrical. Okay. So, this is this all this will only happen that uh, even though you have lossless line this reactive power expressions are different uh, and the sending end and re receiving end which I have seen in the last lecture, but here you can see the expressions for Q S and Q R are only differed with this negative sign representing that they will have equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, uh, but this will only happen if we have a symmetrical line. Symmetrical line means we consider that V S is equal to V R. Okay. So, we will consider this uh, you know symmetricity of the line many times um, uh, in deriving many equations uh, in this particular course and when it happens you have to understand that this uh, reactive power would be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction uh, in a long power transmission line which is uh, lossless and which is also symmetrical as well. Okay. Now, we can do one thing, we can also make two case studies work here. Number one what will happen when this uh, line is having on no load. So, when 
this line is operating at no load delta would be equal to 0. This is probably you have learned from this uh, basic power system course. So, thereby this P s is equal to P r is equal to 0 okay? because you can see from the last slide here this P s and P r it is directly proportional to sin delta. So, when delta is equal to 0 and delta will be 0 only when you have uh, lossless uh, line operating at no load condition. So, when it happens then P s P r would be 0, but this Q s will be equal to minus 1089.46 MVR and Q r will be equal to plus 1089.46 MVR. Okay. That is you can verify from this expression. One is 120854, another is minus 12. When this delta is equal to 0, it is basically representing the difference of 1208 minus 2298. One is coming out to be negative another is coming out to be positive that is what the difference is and however, both the magnitudes are equal. Okay. Now, at this delta is equal to 90 degree which is theoretically maximum power flow that is that can possible through this power transmission line that is equal to Q s is equal to. So, when delta is equal to 90 degree cos delta would be 0. So, it will be equal to 1208.54 MPR and Q r will be equal to minus 1208.54 MPR. Now, one may always ask this question that why you are getting this is negative, this is negative, whereas this is positive, this is positive. So, this is appearing due to some conditions which I will discuss in more detail in the next lecture. But one thing you can understand that when you have a symmetrical long lossless transmission line, we will have this conditions hold that is Q s equal to minus Q r and P s is equal to P r. Okay. So, that is the main goal uh, of discussing this numerical problem. Okay. So, we already derived the expression for Q s, Q r, P s, P r also search impedance loading. Now, next that uh, we need to derive that uh, this the last question that voltage at receiving end at no load conditions considering that line has no symmetricity. This is very important. So, in the question itself it is given as uh, this V s is equal to V r. Suppose this V s is not equal to V r. Okay. So, if this happens then uh, determine the voltage at the receiving end at no load condition. Okay. So, in order to find this, so let us write, so to find V r when the line is operated is not symmetrical, is not symmetrical and it is operated at no load condition. Okay. So, in order to find this what you need to do is uh, we have to find out the relationship of voltage uh, of the sending end side to receiving end side. So, we know the relationship it is already derived that is equal to V s is equal to V r cos beta l plus j z c i r sin beta l. Okay. Now, since the line is operating at no load conditions, so I r is equal to 0. So, I r is equal to 0, I r magnitude is equal to 0 since it 
it is operating at no load condition. Okay. So, what we will get that V s. So, when I r is equal to 0, this part would be equal to 0. So, we get V s is equal to V r cos beta l. Now, we also from this we can also write that V s magnitude is equal to V s magnitude is equal to V r magnitude multiplied by cos beta l. So, from that we can write out that V r that, that is receiving end voltage is equal to V s divided by cos beta l. Okay. Now, we know that what is beta l uh, from this numerical question and we can put over here. So, we will get V s divided by cos 58.27 degree which is coming out to be 1.9 V s. So, that is what an important relationship that V r magnitude is equal to 1.9 times of this V s. Okay. So, it means that it implies that that receiving end voltage receiving end voltage at no load condition at no load condition is 1.9 time of sending end voltage. Okay. So, this this equation implies to that the receiving end voltage is 1.9 times of sending end voltage when the line is operating at no load condition. Okay. Now, what is the implication of that? That means, suppose uh, this sending end voltage is 735 kV, then receiving end voltage will be almost double of that. Now, is it acceptable? Of course, it is not because this line is uh, designed based upon the rated voltage. So, it is expected that uh, this line uh, voltage at both the end should be somewhere close to 735. There can be some uh, you know uh, plus minus drop which might be acceptable either uh, 5 percent drop or something like that would be acceptable, but beyond that would not be acceptable. And most importantly when this receiving and voltage we will see that much of this uh, rise. So, whatever electrical devices would be connected at the receiving end all would be damaged. Okay. All these devices we will see their insulation would be felt okay, and they will be burnt out. So, which is not acceptable. So, always this, uh, this, this type of voltage rise is taken care of by the uh, this grid operator very carefully so that they, this should never happen. Now, the question is why this is happening, why it is happening as per this equation we are getting this receiving end voltage is 1.9 times of the sending end voltage. Why it is happening? This is happening due to a special effect which is taught in your uh, BTEC level undergraduate level power system course that is called Ferranti effect. This is happening due to the VAR generation of this line uh, during no load condition. When the line is operating at no load condition, uh, since there is no load, there is no reactive power demand at the receiving end, whereas the line is generating huge amount of reactive power due to its capacitive uh, parameter. Okay. So, line inherently generate a lot of reactive power uh, because of this C or capacitive uh, reactance or capacitive parameter of the line. And this when this happens then the voltage rise will happen at the receiving end, but this 1.9 times of the sending end voltage is significant enough uh, to cause all sort of damage. So, this is not acceptable and this is somewhat you should understand and this Ferranti effect probably you have learned in your basic power system course, but here you can verify it. Uh, its uh, severity or its uh, mathematical from this mathematical expression you can verify uh, its effect on this line. So, this is now we have 
uh, solved whatever questions we have asked in this numerical problem and this similar type of numerical problem we will discuss in the future lecture as well. This will make you understand uh, how this line works so that you should understand that what sort of remedial measures you should make. Here itself this Ferranti effect shows that we need some remedial measures to avoid this Ferranti effect. So, this Ferranti effect uh, shows that we need some remedial effect, we need some remedy, some remedial measures, measure to avoid voltage rise at the receiving end. Now, how do you do that? Here itself uh, we need to know about the uh, role of the compensators and this is done by this is done by compensator, this is done by deploying compensators. Now, there are different types of compensators which I will go and discuss in very detail. Uh, if you have a uh, fixed compensator which is just uh, used for this over voltage mitigation or voltage rise mitigation, then when uh, this load will get change, then that uh, will cause uh, uh, severe under voltage. Okay. So, a fixed compensation has some difficulty in operation because load is very rarely go for uh, this uh, light loading condition, load is the parameter which is continuously changing throughout uh, 24 hours and when only when this uh, midnight when our uh, customers uh, use very lesser amount of devices, then only load uh, drops to a very lower value. Other than that uh, during daytime, during evening load used to be uh, near to the peak when uh, most of the school college offices industries are working. Uh, so, so during that time uh, the if the same compensator is connected at the receiving end which may cause severe under voltage. So, we need a compensator which can be also controlled. So, here itself we have the role of the power electronic compensators which I am going to discuss throughout this lecture in this particular course. Okay. Now, uh, at this point you should understand that how a uh, long power transmission line works and how to solve uh, the numerical problems related to a long lossless even symmetrical uh, power transmission line and uh, this will uh, be further used in future uh, lecture also. Okay. Now, at this point we are only considering the voltages, current and the power flow uh, at the descending end and receiving end. Now, what would happen if we change the reference from sending end and receiving end to any other part of the line, now what would be the voltage conditions, what would be the power flow expression, those things we will see in the next lecture. Okay. So, up to this today, thank you very much for attending this course.